Welcome to the BadgerCast, where we talk about Bitcoin, yield farming, and the future of decentralized finance. My name is Wasabi Boat Research. Nothing you're about to hear is investment, financial, or spiritual advice, but merely the personal opinions of a rotating cast of internet badgers. Check us out and learn how to put your crypto to work at www.badger.com. Welcome to the BadgerCast. It's Wasabi, and we are talking with Tritium, Jonto, and Spataboom today. We're going to be addressing some some very important questions that have been coming up in the Badger Discord about um, Citadel, Badger, the relationship between the two. What is the deal with all these uh, night hats that people are wearing now? Um, so yeah, we're going to get into all of that and more. We're calling today's episode the Badger Maxi's Guide to Citadel. So it's kind of like what is the DAO to DAO relationship going to be? How is how are we conceiving Badger is incubating or spinning off or helping to launch Citadel along with our partners? And we're going to kind of get into the real nitty gritty of of that relationship and how it's going to look uh, going forward. So thank you all for for joining me. How's it going? Uh, how's it going, everyone? It's going good. How's everyone else? I'm so pumped. It's unbelievable. I'm also sufficiently pumped. Too. I'm doing good. <laughs> all right. So, Spada, let, let me start with you. I want to get all three of your takes on this, but like the the idea to launch Citadel came out of several different either pain points or ideas for for growth that we saw, or or like different um, different learnings that we have uh, learned over the last eighteen months with Badger. So let's let's. I just want to like get each of your takes on this like what are some of the lessons that that we've learned over the last months and and that kind of like helps spur the idea for for citadel so spada what's uh what's your take on this well i think um one of the biggest things is you know badger's taken arguably the biggest swing and the only swing at trying to drive influence um and, and yield on bitcoin across DeFi. You know, we've talked about this ad nauseum but in the end of the day there's very few, if any, groups, protocols, entities, companies, large LPs that are driving yield on Bitcoin in any of the ecosystems to which yield is is available at scale. And I think one of the most prominent ones that majority of the capital is deposited into is the Curve and Convex ecosystem. And as a, a very simple example, I think Bitcoin represents 20 or 25 percent of the TVL and, and curve that might have changed in the last couple months, but pretty darn close. Yet, I think only 1% of the emissions and in turn the yield is actually going to uh, the BTC pools. So Badger, uh, you know, attempted to take a swing and it was a little bit um, too big of a ball really for us to hold on our own accord. And I think a big, a big justification around why someone would want to drive yield is because they want to earn yield and they have a bunch of Bitcoin. Now, Badger, the DAO is operating on behalf of its users so it could provide higher yield to its users, more depositors, more TVL. But the missing piece there is being able to have influence. You also need to have a line share of what you're actually influencing. I think a wonderful example of that is Frax and what Frax has been able to accomplish with the 50% ownership through their AMOs in the FRAX three curve pool and the profitability that comes from bribing and voting when you have that large of an LP. So that was really the crux of, you know, Badger's entire mission is how do we bring Bitcoin to DeFi and bringing Bitcoin to DeFi. And we started to learn how difficult it was to actually accomplish this and how difficult the yield on Bitcoin is in the current environment. And I think, Secondary to that, um, we also, you know, have grown to learn over the last 16 months, you know, how mercenary capital in DeFi is and how is, as fast as it comes, it goes. And really, it's um, difficult to have sustainability in deposits, which in turn speak to revenue and profit for the protocol and the DAO. And that in itself um this mercenary capital problem. And we started to see this with protocol controlled liquidity, you know, a few different protocols have done a great job with this. And 
and we started to ask ourselves and a few community members that were excited about potentially building a sub DAO started to talk about um, what if a lot, what if Badger had a lot of influence around the lion's share of its Bitcoin deposits and what could be accomplished there, both from a yield influence standpoint, from a stability of a protocol revenue and for, you know, just the sustainability and longevity of the protocol moving forward. So those are like the, I'd say some of the key things that I think we learned and a few of the reasons um, why it pushed Citadel to start becoming ideated and, you know, obviously many months later getting ready to launch. Tridium, let's let's go to you next. What are some of the problems that you saw as as like Citadel, something like Citadel can uh, can solve? Sure. So yeah, I you know, first of all, like everything Spot has said is, is spot on. But uh and, and I agree with that. So and, and when I think about it, I guess I go back to like, you know, Badger at the beginning. So when when you think about Badger, we had two tasks, right? One was like vaults that were focused on single asset Bitcoin yields and finding them and farming them. And then the other one was like dig, which is some sort of like an algorithmic Bitcoin thing. Right. And then over time, we kind of like added IBBTC and we continued to try to kind of like advance our vault farming with the idea that we were going to just take all of the Bitcoin, you know, that was looking for yields and bring it into DeFi. I think the reality that's of what's happened over the last year is that like that Bitcoin has found DeFi, right? And there's now so much Bitcoin on DeFi that if you're offering reasonably safe, you know, single asset Bitcoin yields without any perceived risk or without much perceived risk beyond like smart contract risk from trusted platforms, that, you know, there will be soon more Bitcoin than all the stable coin that exists, right? It, there's a, an incredible amount of Bitcoin that is, is ready to farm. And so I think, to me, the learning there is that like, you know, like what we need to do is figure out ways to like make money and farm with Bitcoin that aren't single asset, right? And so Citadel is, is a really good, I think like first stab an example of that, right? So this is a treasury, right? It should track Bitcoin reasonably well. It can make plays where there's, you know, the, the issue with the other issue with, with yields on single asset Bitcoin is that there's actually not that much trading volume, right? There's not that many people trading REN BTC for WBTC for BBTC. So I think like when you start to look at it, like this new $4 four curve thing in like the nights and the relationships, you start to see like, you know, a USDC or a USD Bitcoin pool is, is like super interesting. And you can see how there's a lot of volume there. There's a lot of yields there. It makes sense, right? And then Citadel, a treasury is managed, can find ways to, you know, like, have deposits there and then make some other bets that like hedge that out or, you know, find intelligent ways to farm Bitcoin where it makes sense and actually increase that. So I think that's like super interesting. And I think like once we get Citadel done, we've got a bunch of other interesting ideas about how we can do things like that. And I think that's kind of what starts to actually make Bitcoin more like of something in De DeFi that people accept like, hey, like I'm doing something with this that involves like some risk or, you know, some pairing or I'm, I'm making some other investment other than just trying to yield farm my Bitcoin. All right, John Todd, do you have anything uh, to add on this? Yeah, I mean, all great points um, and I'll keep it quick, but I think, you know, what we're all kind of alluding to, you know, DeFi in crypto in general, it's, you know, one large coordination game. And I think what we realized is, you know, as much as we were able to use the Badger token to try to incentivize people to coordinate in a way that would drive sustainable uh, yield and you know, opportunities to deploy Bitcoin in DeFi, um, just that was not really enough and, and very difficult. So, and also Badger kind of, as we put our effort into building out our tech. It was focused on vaults and these influence vaults. And we'll probably get in more into the you know future of Badger around that. But, you know, that framework wasn't ideal for this coordination tool to kind of create this like long-term sustainable um, yield in Bitcoin. So getting people to uh, rally around, you know, one asset and being able to kind of collectively deploy, um, you know, funds in strategic manners, I think that's where hopefully we'll be able to kind of make, you know, major impact where beforehand to, you know, 
make those things happen. We had to, you know, shift around badger emissions and give people, you know, rebates on gas for moving between vaults and things like that. So I think that's what we're excited about is, you know, being able to kind of instantiate that initial goal, um, you know, into something new. Awesome. So let's, um, let's back up here. I know, so we're, this first question is kind of like set up the case for, for launching it. And I guess the, the thing that I sort of took away was like, you know, we were having, so like, obviously there's a ton of Bitcoin looking for yield. The new paradigm of DeFi is you need these yield influence assets like CVX to vote for, for the yield. So then a protocol like Badger is kind of running into the problem of like, we need a certain ratio of CVX to Bitcoin in order to, to get that. And then, like uh, I guess Tridium said, you know, you have people who want to put in their Bitcoin, but they don't want to put in CVX. So then having this treasury become Badger's biggest user that can say, OK, we want X percent of CVX or whatever yield influence asset like makes a lot of sense um, in, ter in terms of like solving that coordination problem to get the right ratios and having that change over time as the market develops. But like. Let's let's just like back up a little bit, Jonto. Can you just give us a quick overview? You know, we've done other podcasts, and there's the Citadel Sessions YouTube channel now that also covers some of this stuff. But just for for someone who maybe hasn't listened to it, another podcast about Citadel, can you give us a quick TLDR of like the mechan what it is and the launch mechanics and uh, how the partners play into that? Yeah, totally. I will do my best to uh, TL. DR and, and keep it short. But um, so I think there's a couple key mechanics um, with Citadel and they're all geared towards, you know, kind of focusing on first principles when we were discussing and launching this thing is, all right, you know, blank slate, knowing what we know about, you know, DeFi, how, you know, users interact in DeFi, you know, how could we, and what our goals are, um, you know, how can we structure the economics of the protocol to, you know, serve that. Um, so the goal is to acquire as much Bitcoin as possible. So it's, you know, we've kind of stated many times before, it wants to be, you know, the people's Bitcoin whale, the largest community owned Bitcoin position in the world, um, things like that. So that leads to, okay, we need to be able to acquire Bitcoin over a long period of time. You know, what's the main tool that we'll have for acquiring Bitcoin? It's going to be token emissions. Uh, so we, you know, have a term we use funding where uh, token, you know, new token emissions will be used to acquire uh, strategic assets so that can be Bitcoin, um, but any, you know, really anything else. I think we realize that to operate in DeFi and take advantage of all the opportunities, we won't need just Bitcoin to deploy, but we'll need influence assets such as, you know, Badger and, you know, and CBX are you know, some initial ones, but, you know, we're open to a lot of different, um, you know, assets that we'll be able to deploy if we can, you know, get, you know, uh, legitimate strategies built out around those. So we have an emission schedule that's um, set for, it's basically like a 10-year emission schedule. The initial sale is going to be a uh, fixed price, but un uncapped. So we don't know the initial supply necessarily, but we can, once we know the initial supply, we'll know, you know, in five, 10 years, what is the, you know, total supply? Um, all of it is obviously still, you know, controlled by governance. So that can be changed, but you know, we thought it was important to have something fairly fixed. Um, so we know what the emission schedule is and we structured it really based on kind of how we assumed the, you know, interest in the project would go where there'd be a lot of like upfront um, interest in it and then front loading those emissions to hopefully have a lot of growth in the first year or two of the protocol, but then still have sustained emissions, um, you know, for the years following so that there's, you know, still kind of dry powder to be used to go out and acquire more Bitcoin, acquire more assets. Um, so uh, in the, you know, tokenomics article, we've got the, you know, the graph where I think over the first year where we're, you know, tripling the supply roughly, and then that kind of tails off to, you know, lower double digit emissions uh, on the long tail. So that's, you know, the emission schedules were refer to that kind of as elastic emissions where the way that we backed into the formula was kind of focusing on the curve that we wanted. And then we have a formula that starts with kind of a target APY and then, um, you know, from there uh, reduces over time. So the next point was, okay, what do we do with these emissions? How do we decide how much of it we're using to go out and acquire assets? Um, and the way that we're determining that is based on the MT ratio, uh, which is market cap over treasury value, meaning that as market cap, the price of the Citadel token um, outpaces the value in the treasury, 
more assets will be, you know, more of the newly minted Citadel will go towards acquiring assets and, and go into the funding operations. Uh, and as the market cap contracts relative to the treasury value, uh, more of those emissions will go towards, um, go to stakers and lockers. So, and we put ourselves in the shoes of, you know, the future users of the protocol where when you're staking and locking, price is going up, everything's good you know, market cap is above treasury value by a reasonable amount. You're okay with more of the Citadel going towards um, being, you know, essentially sold, but, you know, we have a funding mechanism we don't get in, need to get into now that we'll use to acquire kind of staked Citadel through open market operations. And then that bolsters the value of the treasury and hopefully brings that up during times when the market cap is high. And then if there are times where there's less interest and the market cap starts tracking lower relative to the uh, treasury value, as it approaches, you know, one or a little over one, more of those emissions will be going towards stakers, improving the uh, staking APR. And then there'll, there'll be less um, Citadel hitting the open market. It'll be kind of distributed directly to lockers and stakers concentrating their positions. So those are the two core mechanics, the emissions schedule, and then, um, you know, how we're distributing the emissions based on like the market cap and treasury ratio and all of that kind of essentially, you know, launch, you know, came out of us thinking from, you know, the user perspective, you know, the, the Dow contributor perspective, you know, how, you know, what we thought would make the most sense and also be able to live through different market cycles. And now let's get into a little bit more. Uh, so that's that's the launch, and we have articles on that 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 we'll link to in the show notes. But like the other really cool thing about the launch is the involvement of the partners, and I think that that's something that I haven't seen before in in DeFi in terms of like we know that and and, and other Treasury DAOs. I think it's been like there's a lot of focus on the just the initial launch and the the. Um, the mechanics of that, but then, you know, the, the kind of like phase two question that we've seen with, with other protocols like this is like, okay, what's the, what's going to be driving the value for the treasury going on and going forward. And that's kind of like the key piece that I think Citadel is, is going to be a huge innovator on. So Spada, let's, let's go to you and talk about the Knights of the Citadel and how they are involved with this picture and how, how Badger as one of the Knights is going to be helping to to drive the investment of the treasury assets after the initial launch. Sure. So <clears throat> uh, if we think back to Badger's launch, I think one of the one of the reasons why it was so successful in helping spark and bootstrap a community of committed individuals with shared values and beliefs was because the initial distribution was based off of on-chain actions across participating in decentralized governance, um, using tokenized Bitcoin and supporting public goods. And those on-chain actions, which we've recently seen with Optimism um, and some of the things that they're, they attempted to do or they're doing with their airdrop and connecting the right folks, is if you find the right people and in the crypto space, it's much easier than you know some of the, the, the Web2 kind of arenas because you can look at on-chain data and it doesn't matter who the individual is, what their age is, what their gender is, all that type of stuff. All that matters is the actions that have been taken. You can get very granular in defining which actions that could be taken that would then potentially influence um, them being the right type of community member and market participant in the protocol that's being built. So now you take that a step further and you think about a treasury DAO and you think about um, a large Bitcoin position, you have a variety of protocols, Badger included, where it would love to have influence around some of its largest LPs, you know, for the purpose of helping showcase certain products that are being developed, um, having influence around the stickiness of those deposits, and then also having the ability to create innovations together with those users or LPs. And, you know, it's pretty clear to see how a, a large Bitcoin depositor in yield aggregation vaults, like what, what Badger does as a protocol is beneficial to Badger and beneficial from a treasury automation standpoint to a, a treasury DAO like Citadel. But then you start thinking about some of these other protocols, right? Like Convex and Frax and Terra and Tribe and 
Redacted and, and a few of these other ones, you, you know, Tokemak's another great example. You start saying to yourself, if these protocols have vested interest and have influence around these large Bitcoin positions, they are the exact type of quote unquote users or holders that are, are going to want to um, see this protocol be successful have a large say in governance and participate in helping shape all these ideas that are going to come over the lifespan of the protocol. And they're, of course, going to want to help drive um, that capital and incentivize that capital and do things um, that benefit their protocol as much as it benefits the Citadel protocol, since they have a stake in that as well. So that's really the unique nature of this of this launch is from the get go, arguably, the right holders are positioned to have an influence and say, and then that makes Citadel the protocol and Citadel the Treasury that much more effective, because it's going to have many more avenues and, and, and honestly have a level of um, uh, have an advantage to being able to optimize its treasury over potentially other treasury DAOs that are looking to um, try and gain a level of optimization in those protocols because they have a stake in it and vice versa. Because you know, most likely a, an example of that's Convex, right? Um, Citadel is going to have a bunch of Convex. Citadel is going to have a bunch of Badger. Down the road, I'm sure it's going to be holding a lot of the other protocols. Um, governance tokens, which then act as yield influence assets for those deposits. Frax is another one, which was recently approved in the proposal. So. That's the uniqueness of the nighting round. I think it aligns all parties from the get go in the right way. And I you know, generally think that this is going to be a model that other protocols look to leverage and use as they as they get ready for their launch. Awesome. So in terms of the, the way the launch is, is shaping up, you know, C Citadel is a we're calling it a sub DAO or it's, it's a DAO that's being launched by Badger and, you know, Badger itself is a DAO. So it has team members that have different interests and, and some of them have been, you know, super, uh, you know, maxi on the Citadel side and, and really leaning into that. And then other people are, you know, continuing to work on new vaults for Badger and stuff. So, so Tritium, let's go to you because you're one of the people that I guess, you know, I see you more talking in the Badger Discord and talking with people um, who are, you know, asking questions about, okay, what exactly is the Badger relationship here? How is this all going to work? Like, what are the tokenomics going to look like? I know you've had in-depth conversations with several community members about about some of this stuff. So, like, what are you what are you hearing and telling people in, in those um, in those discussions who are asking, okay, like, this all sounds great, but like, what's in it for Badger? Like, what is the you know, let's get down to like the tokenomics. What is the team going to look like? What's the token allocation to the different protocols going to look like? Well, so my understanding is Badger is getting 10% of, of the Citadel token. Um, and so we'll have that in our treasury. And then, and then there's the 5% going to the partners, right? And clearly it's important for Badger to hold on to that 10% of the Citadel token because we want to have influence over Citadel ourselves. Um, I think like, most of the, the questions that I've been hearing from holders are more around like, you know, what, how is this going to result in a change in like price action in Badger, right? And I think like a lot of people, and I think most people kind of see Citadel as like a Badger sink in a sense that will be like acquiring the Badger token, right? Using it, using it for boost. So yes, in some senses it will like over time dilute boost, right? Is they're able to like, earn more of the badger emissions but in doing so they're also taking a lot of badger off the market potentially buying it um and at least at the moment my understanding is their plan is to take all of that badger and put it into lp with bitcoin right where they can then vote on yields for it and farm it right so that then also creates liquidity for the protocol um in terms of like the other issue is that, you know, like Badger needs AUM and we need customers. And at least right now, our primary business model is that we make money charging fees on vaults, right? Like Citadel will, I think, very quickly become our largest depositor, right? So my understanding is their current plan or the current Citadel plan is to deposit basically 
all of the funds in Badger, in the Badger system, and then these vaults are all earning, you know, between 15 and 20% fees, um, which yeah, then feeds the treasury and allows things to continue to grow. Um, the other issue that, that I heard some concerns about was the fact that Badger was being only accepted in the second round um, and at a higher price, right? So Badger holders were like, well, the, the thing, if I want to buy Citadel, the thing that I need to do is sell my Badger for Citadel, right? That's going to create a lot of downward price pressure. And then the white list is pretty wide, right? And who's going to be left to like, buy that badger back and and deposit it. So like we went back to the Citadel team, we talked about that. I think like I'll, I'll let John talk about that a little bit more if he wants, but I think we've changed the tokenomics such that, you know, there's a focus on not creating sell pressure on badger, right? And and yeah, and making sure that people can bond badger at the same price. Yeah, I can touch on that real quick, just on the sale um, structure, it'll be a fixed, you know, $21 sale price and we'll be accepting uh you know dollars and bitcoin different dollar tokens ust frax um specifically and then uh, wbtc ren btc ibbtc and then you know tritium said i think in the initial structure we had had the uh, focus on acquiring badger and cvx be kind of a um, second tier sale um but we've kind of rolled that in to just kind of do as part of the initial uh the initial event so be taking in you know badger and cvx in that um, scenario and then what we're working on now um and we'll be publishing kind of for you know public consumption later in the week or early next week is kind of an initial uh treasury composition proposal um that'll have some wiggle room in it because we don't know how big the treasury is going to be and how it gets deployed will be depending you know dependent very much so on how big it is but that'll kind of have a breakdown of okay what percentage of the treasury do we want to have in badger so we'll acquire these assets and then you know if they're out of whack for those ratios we'll kind of have pre-approval to kind of reallocate um so maybe we get a lot more stables than we get in badger or something like that we can use those to acquire badger um you know up to the uh, percentages we're kind of targeting and then deploy um deploy those strategies and uh, i think you know there's a lot of initial use for um, Badger in its initial state where, you know, if you're holding Badger, it's the best place to get yield um, on your Bitcoin. And that's mostly denominated in Badger. Um, but, you know, obviously there is a lot of future, um, you know, hopefully future utility that gets uh, rolled out with the Badger token that Citadel will work very closely with, with Badger on. And we can kind of use this as, you know, a testing ground or showcase of that. So I think there's more utility that those of us kind of, closer to things are kind of seeing that we'll be able to leverage it for um, long-term beyond even just, you know, this initial boost on this initial pool um, that we're excited about. And, you know, it's just kind of getting everything you know, together aligned and then figuring out what this best kind of uh, collaboration strategy is across the two DAOs so that we can hopefully collaborate across, you know, more DAOs and uh, institutions as well. It, it was I just wanted to I just wanted to chime in on a couple of things that was said at, at that school. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I, I think Trip, you know, Trip and John both brought up your points, but to a couple of the points that Trip made, um, really, this is the start of, you know, what we be, what we believe to be kind of the evolution of Badger, right? Um, where we have protocols building on top, like Citadel in particular, is going to use Badger's unique vaults and i say they're unique because uh, unlike other vault solutions in the market they don't just sell the rewards back for the underlying asset if you have bitcoin deposited it's not selling all the rewards that are being formed back for bitcoin instead we've developed a unique way to maximize those rewards by taking them and either staking them locking them putting them into vaults so almost well, not almost all the rewards that are being earned are interest bearing in nature, which helps boost the yield, but also eliminate a lot of work for users. And if you think about the types of users that that would be most beneficial for, it's fairly easy, especially if you've you know been working uh, in the DeFi space to understand that large DAOs and large treasuries that operate across multi-sigs have big, big pain points around automation. 
and it requires a lot of manual intervention, which in itself is, you know, goes against the decentralized ethos that I think a lot of us are, are working to build and, and create. So when you think about, you know, the evolution of Badger, you think about protocols building on top of Badger for a variety of reasons. If it's Citadel using it for automated treasury management, if it's for peg stability, like what Prax is going to do with their AMOs, or even if you look at, you know, an automated, um, or if you look at like a black hole liquidity or a decentralized um, market maker, like Tokmak, for example, being able to automate and optimize uh, the, the reward collections that it's getting from, from its LP positions and its attempts to, you know, produce impermanent loss and things along those lines. And this is really that first up to bat where instead of users come and say, Hey, I want to deposit and earn. It's more, Hey, protocols build on top of badger and here are all the things that you could do. And, and they're bat battle tested contracts, permissionless in nature. And you can really use these contracts to do what you want. And if you think about Citadel, regardless of, you know, where it's treasury goes, where right? we talked about a lot of the Knights, you know, if, if, if they, if there's an approval process for Tokmak to be whitelisted for deposits, uh, if there's approval for other other potential protocols um, to be whitelisted for deposits of the Citadel Treasury, you know, for Badger to build um, automated vaults, it's not just about curve and convex, right? Like that acumen, domain experience, and fortitude is there to do that. So really, any type of yield strategy or any treasury automation regardless of the protocol you know there's an opportunity for uh, badger to build vaults and if you think about the impact that that has trip brought up you know two really good points one is uh, aum obviously an increase in aum equals increase in revenue increase of profitability increases sustainability but also you have higher yielding vault positions or excuse me, higher yielding LPs that don't require Badger to push the yield influence to keep those LPs high and that yield high. And the reason that that matters is the vault systems built to which it takes a percentage performance fee. So what we've seen with Bitcoin and the vault positions for the last year and a half is they're almost never above the two or 3% yield and if they are it's for a limited amount of time so if the vaults you know thrive off of being able to generate uh 15 or 20 25 percent fee whatever it is on the actual yield but the yield is one percent even if there's five billion dollars in there it's not nearly as attractive as you know 200 million dollars of something yielding 30 percent as an example so I think uh, that open up that opens up a whole you know, slew of opportunities for Badger the protocol, and I think it becomes a fantastic showcase for other protocols and DAOs, um, new you know DeFi engineers looking to build a, a new exciting protocol to look to Badger and look to say you know we can build on Badger, and I think that you know that's a big driver here, and, and that's probably one of the key messages anyone listening really should be taken home the the relationship between Citadel and Badger, um, you know, being a sub DAO, being it that Badger is going to have a large position, being it that Badger is going to be earning cash flow off of that large position, being it that Badger is going to have higher AUM, higher revenue, higher profitability. That's all, you know, that's all fantastic. But having the ability to um, really represent or, or present Badger as more of a base layer protocol, I think is is what changes the game. And I think a lot of things are gonna be affected by that moving forward. You know, there's been a lot of scrutiny over the last year around, you know, Badger tokenomics as an example. You know, if the tokenomics are shaped to service 10,000 users that are depositing into the vault system versus five protocols that build on top and represent 10 X the amount of capital or AUM, how those tokenomics are shifted, um, are, are you know, is really going to be quite a bit different between the two groups.
So I think there's going to be a lot of downfall, that a lot of um, uh, overflow, not downfall, excuse me, of positive changes within the Badger ecosystem as this gets off the ground. But again, you know, it really comes down to what actually happens um, and, you know, what type of successful launch and overall acceleration after launch Citadel is going to have, along with some of the other partners and protocols that have, you know, shown interest and wanted to build on Badger as well. Yeah. I mean, I think just, just to build on that, like going, when I started doing uh, marketing stuff at Badger, you know, there, the question in my mind was like, okay, who is the customer? Is it, you know, someone that has, you know, an individual consumer that has some Bitcoin and they want to earn yield in it. And then we, you know, saw more and more institutional uh, funds and things of that nature coming into Badger. And that, that has a totally different profile of how you would talk to someone like that. So like, those were kind of the two categories that I was trying to think about, but then just what Citadel introduces and opens up and, and something we've been seeing more and more of is like, what if it's actually neither of those? What if it's actually these large DAOs that we're helping to create and that are springing up and we're either partnering with them or DAOs becoming the customers of, of other DAOs? And one of the cool things with the launch of Citadel that we've seen is like, you don't have to uh, create marketing materials and try to uh, convince, you know, 10,000 people to put you know, two Bitcoin each, you can actually go and write a proposal to these other big DAOs like we've seen with um, Frax and now with Terra, where we're actually just directly going to other DAOs as part of their open governance processes and saying, here's what we're building. Here's why we think it's a good idea for you to be a part of it. And um, then the governance takes takes the takes its course and is approved or adjusted or whatever, whatever happens. So I just think that, yeah, like, this is even a category that I wasn't even thinking about eight months ago in, in terms of how, how it's playing out. Um, so let's, Johnson, let me go, go to you. So like, you know, we're talking about, okay, Citadel is going to be a big depositor and user of Badger. Let's get into like the operational details of that. So like, what, what, what would it look like um, for, you know, Badger to spin up custom vaults for Citadel or, or introducing new strategies um, for putting its, its assets to work like how 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 would that work in uh in terms of going from idea to having a custom vault spun up at at badger with citadel being the depositor yeah so um it would start by you know through governance proposals um and we're kind of working on the strategy proposals now and we just posted i think yesterday to the forum the structure for for future proposals um, but you know, high level, it'll be someone, you know, putting together a, a structure of, Hey, you know, deposit assets here, acquire, you know, X, Y, Z other assets, is there voting involved, things like that. Um, that'll go into a, a document that'll go to a, um, a kind of a strategy, a risk review committee to review. And then if, um, sufficient, if it kind of meets the goals of Citadel and see, you know, seems to be, uh, you know, doable <laughs> a, and then, you know, seems to kind of, uh, you know, you know, fit all those criteria, then it would be something that, um, can be voted for, for allocating assets to, and, you know, that would fit inside the larger framework. So there'd be, um, you know, components in there where we're tracking, you know, what's the, uh, you know, expected correlation of the strategy to Bitcoin, you know, what's the protocol risk, um, things like that. So that it's a process that's going to take a while to eventually, hopefully more fully decentralize. Um, but, you know, it's, it'll be fairly hands-on for now. And, you know, I think we look at Badger as more the, you know, tech arm um, of Citadel, meaning that, you know, it's going to be a service provider that we interface with to ideally, you know, ideally most of these strategies can be built as vaults. Um, and the real value that it brings is, you know, doing the stuff with a you know, multi-sig and doing stuff through, you know, especially through governance, if we're, you know, eventually going to hope, hopefully get to more, um, you know, more on-chain type governance. Uh, it's very hard to do these, you know, more complex strategy deployments in that you know, manner. Uh, it's a lot easier to deposit to a vault and that vault has a strategy associated with it that handles all of the, you know, complicated stuff for you. So it can claim an asset, swap it for something else, uh, pair it with something else, deposit it somewhere, stake it somewhere, and then redistribute, you know, some 
uh, liquid representation of that asset back to the DAO or even take that and then put it somewhere else and borrow stables against it. So these, you can do all these various layers and you might be something more custom to Citadel for how it wants the assets handled. Um, and you can, we can kind of work with uh, Badger to get those built. So you know, where I see kind of long-term the um, flow being is that there's, you know, governance that would, you know, pass the strategy, um, you know, creation, say, hey, this is a strategy we're going to actually deploy. And then that would kind of uh, trigger a proposal on the Badger side, or maybe, you know, Citadel needs to have, you know, you need to have some amount of Badger to even get that proposal in, but, you know, Badger team builds those out, deploys them. Um, I think there will be questions on, you know, depending on the type of strategy, if it's something that's open for anyone to deposit into, or if it's something that just, you know, Citadel would deposit into with, um, you know, some, uh, you know, whitelisting of just the, the Citadel address, because it might be something where all the yields are set to sent to a multi-sig, you know, where it's not necessarily, um, you know, something that other people would want to get into. So I think that's kind of the general flow where we're seeing Badger's kind of that, um, you know, partner uh, to build out those strategies. And, you know, because it has this long track record of building, um, you know, secure and, um, you know, flexible strategies. And we're, you know, it's, it, there's been a lot of activity under the surface at, at Badger over the past, you know, quarter, I say, you know, pretty much this whole, whole year on really making some strides and, um, you know, more efficient and more decentralized um, vaults that can handle more complex uh, logic. And, you know, Citadel can hopefully, to, you know, use that structure to build out these different strategies and deploy them and manage them efficiently so that when we're having to take actions on the Citadel side, it's, you know, reallocating, you know, withdrawing and redepositing, you know, things like that, not having to claim and restake and pair and LP and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I mean, just to add on that, I'd say like from Badger's point of view, and you know, I don't think this is very visible to the community because it's kind of like the, the deep bowels of tech, right? But in the end, you know, like we've gone to a situation where we had like one developer that was having to like build and write all of the transactions for everything we were doing on like a single multi-sig and, you know, like a fairly clunky scenario to having, you know, like, a team of very skilled people and in processes to check and verify everything we've done. So we've kind of really mastered the art of the multi-sig in a sense. And then at the same time, we've built, you know, like very advanced vaults. Um, and we've got some really like new vault tech that we've been working on for the next like, or last like six months that we've got a few tests going on in Phantom right now. And we're slowly rolling out, right? So we have all of this technology, the team, we have, you know, really access to like the best smart contract, like security available. And we've got constant eyes on our code. Everything's looking great. And so at this point, it really is just figuring out how to apply it. And so like, I think from our point of view, first of all, we're kind of thinking about like, how do we think just, I mean, Citadel, clearly we know what we're doing, but, you know, thinking about the, as Spado is saying, moving towards a more enterprise approach, right? Like, how do we think about like, what makes a viable vault and how much like effort it takes and like who needs to be responsible for management and how to deal with all those things. And so I think yeah, that's something really helpful that's also happening in the background. And I think like, hopefully we'll start talking about like once we get Citadel behind us. All right. So let's go back to the, um, the other partners. So like, obviously Badger is going to be creating vaults with, with an eye towards Citadel being a big user of them. What about the 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 other partners, the other knights? I mean, that that was kind of one of the things that I started thinking more and more about is that these are kind of the some of the most influential uh, DAOs that are determining where yield is going within DeFi. So, Spada, I don't know what like sky's the limit. What are some of the kind of custom things we could be doing to bring in some of these partners as part of the the project of of earning? returns as part of the citadel well call it what it is right where's yield come from in the entire space right now it comes from token rewards and a variety of token rewards in different ecosystems and i'd say to this year and probably some of next year is really going to be the year of influence it's about the adjustment to kind of base layer tokenomics and introducing a variety of ways for people to have more influence boost yield and 
have longer term sustained uh, alignment with the given protocol that you're depositing into. And even with, you know, Citadel's tokenomics, there's a 21 week potential uh, vote lock mechanic that brings a variety of benefits, including being able to earn Bitcoin um, over, you know, different epochs. But when you think about when you think about these partners and the different nights and the different protocols, they all are doing things um, to drive deposits, AUM, utility, um, growth in their synthetic assets, if they're stable coins, like there's a variety of things. And in a lot of these instances, and I'll just give a few, but in a lot of these instances, you know, they would love a Bitcoin whale friend. <laughs> you know, there's so much that could be done when your friend's a Bitcoin whale. And especially if that friend is a decentralized protocol, and especially if that friend in that Bitcoin, you actually have a say over because you own a percentage of the token that governs um, that treasury. But, you know, a couple examples are, let's just talk about Frax and Terra. So um, both of them have uh, interest in building utility and large liquidity for a new base pool on Curve called Four Pool. Uh, that's a mix of uh, four different stable coins, of course, Frax and, and USD is part of that. And to drive that utility and drive that liquidity, they obviously need deposits and they obviously need um, yield influence and vote influence. So with the alignment with Citadel, you now have a partner that can pair its Bitcoin against four pool then have those three protocols work together to drive that yield influence, increase that liquidity, that liquidity is sticky, and they have influence around that liquidity versus mercenary in nature. And then of course, with that, you know, if any, any, any large LP of any pool is always looking for ways to maximize its position. So being at Citadel, it'll have vested interest in trying to find other things to do with those existing staked or deposited LP positions, if that's being able to borrow against them, lever up on them, grow them, things along those lines. Um, so that's a pretty clear benefit, but you know, extending into more of the, the, the Frax uh, ecosystem and narrative, Frax in itself has a gauge system. Frax um, within its gauge system, there's incentivization structures for different types of LPs and then they also have their AMO, uh, which allows them to drive peg stability and mint and burn uh, fracks against that um, that specific pool. If if it's a, if it's an LP versus something like you know a, a lending AMO, for example. But you know, in this instance, now Frax is going to have a pool that it's not completely reliant on pushing the yield influence to build an AMO on top with that AMO that then becomes backing to the Frax asset. In that AMO, they have Bitcoin in there. So now Frax is partially backed by Bitcoin and that's growing. They then have another LP that is also supporting that initiative from a liquidity perspective and utility. And they have a say over that LP just to show like how synergistic these things can become. Um, you know, I think another example that's a little bit uh, further in the future but near term, of course, and there was a great article. There's a community member from the Citadel DAO community. Uh, his name is Ghost, and uh, Ghost08, I think, is is his uh, username. And he put a uh, put a a um, article together um, in collaboration with the Tokmak community around how Citadel DAO could become um, the big Bitcoin influence in in the tokmac ecosystem or the, the black hole of liquidity as they call it right and if you look at tokmac today they don't have um btc reactors for those that are unfamiliar reactors are where you can deposit different types of assets so that you know tokmac could essentially go and and um, in a decentralized nature and, and smart contract based way become a large market maker for those assets um you know, provide LP for them across two sides of the pool and, 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 and obviously generate yield and generate rewards and, and bring that back to the reactors for sustainability in those deposits. But of course, today, it doesn't have any, um, any inroads into Bitcoin. You know, it needs a bunch of Bitcoin deposited in its protocol, but then it also needs something to do with that Bitcoin. 
Like if you think about when Badger launched, you know, a year and a half ago, you know, Badger and Dig were two of the largest uh, Bitcoin LP pools across Uniswap and Sushi Swap. Uh, why? Because no one built pairs. Like there, there wasn't even routed properly on Uniswap for like nine months because the router never really had that much demand um, uh, for routing, uh, routing through WBTC. So, you know, with Citadel comes not only the ability to drive influence, not only the liquidity with larger, large amount of Bitcoin, but then it also opens up all these doors specifically in the Curve and Convex ecosystem for more Bitcoin denominated pools, right? The Badger WBTC pools there, the IBBTC SBTC pool, the Citadel WBTC pool, and I'm sure a variety more will come. And with that type of alignment, you can now start introducing BTC into the Tokmak ecosystem through that Tokmak can become a larger holder of Citadel can become a larger holder of Badger. Badger could potentially build out more, um, you know, reward management automation for their market making activities that they do across the curve and convex ecosystem. Like you're starting to see, you know, the synergies between protocol automation, liquidity and yield influence not just, you know, in one or two scenarios, but in a variety of uh, different protocol scenarios. And it goes back to my point a few minutes ago, which is that's why it's so critical for these protocols to have vested interest from day zero, because they're going to care and they're going to be, and there's going to be a reason why they're taking that effort uh, to make that a reality. And then all protocols involved can benefit. So on the, on the DeFi side of things, I know that you know, just within Badger, we've had a, a big evolution in our strategy uh, of what to do with our CVX, right? So we have this vote locked convex vault. And at first, that was the idea was to use those votes to support uh, Bitcoin yields. And then because the bribes started getting so uh, juicy, the, the, it, it just made more economic sense to just collect those bribes and sell them. So, uh, Within Citadel, like, what is the thought process on how to allocate those yield influence votes? So I know, like, obviously, like, if I was to put on the Badger Maxi hat, like, I would want that going to like the BTC Badger pool, or you know, obviously, like, uh, Terra would would want to go to the four pool because that's that's you know what they're focused on. So like, how what what is the process for kind of breaking down the the yield influence? allocation within citadel and the different partners yeah i can take that i mean it's it's you know very open process um like i said i think we're looking at across a couple different metrics you know bitcoin um correlation and then uh risk so do we need to hold other assets to um you know drive yield to the base asset um, and then also, you know, what's the history of the protocols? Have we used those protocols before? How vaultable is it? You know, how much can we automate the strategy? I think those are all different metrics that we're looking at as far as not just, you know, the risk of holding an asset or the risk of a protocol being hacked, but the risk of Citadel itself managing that in a decentralized manner. So those are all the different metrics that we're, we're looking at. And I think, um, you know, as you know, Spada mentioned, hopefully we can partner with the protocols if, you know, a strategy is being uh, structured and saying, hey, you know, here's, you know, an issue we're running into, or here's a way this could be easier. We can work with them to hopefully facilitate, you know, we, you know, one thing that we've also kind of talked a lot about is Citadel is kind of a Tetra node DAO. So Tetra nodes, if those aren't aware, a large investor in DeFi, but has kind of gotten to the point where, you know, it's, it's a very active position and role in the protocols that uh, he's investing in. So uh, that can be, you know, you know, basically when the protocol will, will launch, he'll be one of the larger depositors. You know, he'll have a lot of the tokens, but he'll actually, you know, deposit into it, use it, um, things like that. And we hope that Citadel can kind of do that. But with Bitcoin, where if a protocol wants to bring capital in, um, you know, Citadel can provide that if they're providing a good um you know, a, a good place to use uh, Bitcoin, Citadel can build a strategy around it that supports the protocol that isn't just extractive, isn't just, you know, depositing Bitcoin and then dumping all their tokens. It can take the tokens, deploy them in a way that they're kind of designing the token to be used and ideally kind of drive value um, 
you know, to the protocol and to Citadel itself. So I think that's the, the angle we're taking with all of the partners and, you know, for it to work out well for everyone, Citadel has to kind of stand on its own. So it's always focused on the main goal of how are we, you know, building out the largest treasury of Bitcoin. And I keep using the term kind of Bitcoin denominated treasury where it's going to hold various other assets and there'll always be some base amount of, you know, uh, Bitcoin, but it can be Bitcoin, you know, held directly, or it can be, you know, paired with ETH or paired with Badger or other things like that. And we just need to be cognizant of, you know, what's that correlation? Do we want to offset that through other operations? You know, if we have, you know, Bitcoin paired with dollars, what does that LP position kind of look like correlation wise to Bitcoin? Um, And do we want to kind of hold other positions uh, either strategically or throughout the, you know, as part of that strategy? Um, to kind of retain that exposure. And I think we'll constantly be looking at like how much, you know, if all strategies were to be liquidated, like what would be the current, you know, Bitcoin amount that the treasury holds, but also what's the Bitcoin value of the treasury. So we'll be looking at all those different metrics and looking at them, you know, objectively uh, and, you know, working out in the open with the various uh, protocols and their communities to, put together proposals and, you know, participate through governance in, you know, getting things structured in a way that is, is uh, you know, attractive for Citadel to um, deploy assets into. Yeah. And just from an influence point of view and to Spada's point, right. One of the really interesting things that I've been thinking a lot about recently, like even when we were doing this thing with OXD was boat matching, right. So to a certain extent, like even thinking about risk, Right. The ability of a, another DAO or of partners to match Citadel's vote or Badger's vote or, you know, whatever, but if DAOs to match each other's votes kind of can like offset some of that risk. And so I think like to your answer, like Wasabi, you know, right now there is no four pool and, and maybe that's the place to vote. But, you know, like Badger always has some allocation that we're voting with and, and it makes maybe just for Citadel to think about like, hey, can you incorporate that kind of let's let's figure out some ratio which we're matching votes and try to think about relations of chips like that i think that i don't know it's it's an interesting line of thinking cool i I have one uh last question about earning um how citadel will earn on its treasury so like a lot of this discussion has been focused on the DeFi side of things and votes and curve and convex emissions and that kind of stuff but like let's go to like the btc maxi side of things like is there is there a potential universe where Citadel owns a hundred ASICs that are sitting in a data center somewhere and actually mining Bitcoin or supporting developers who are working on the Bitcoin core network? Like, are there any? Is there a scenario where Bitcoin where uh, Citadel goes heavy on like the kind of like deeper into the the Bitcoin mining or the uh, the Bitcoin chain itself? Yeah, I'd, I'd say more the latter. Um, I think naturally, you know, the, the goal is for it to be as decentralized as possible, as transparent as possible, which makes it more difficult if there's physical machines and operations along those lines. But in terms of supporting the, the Bitcoin um, core network, both from building on the network and also supporting its developers, like I can just speak for myself as, as a community member, like I'm pretty passionate about that. I think, um, you know, Bitcoin core developers are severely underfunded. I think there's something to be said about, you know, Ethereum core developers as well. And there's been quite a bit of conversations around the core infrastructure that supports Ethereum and its lack of appropriate funding. Um, The same can be said on the Bitcoin core side, and it's been going on a lot longer, obviously since Bitcoin has been online uh, much longer than ETH. And uh, I think naturally there's, there's clear benefits to Citadel if it has a large Bitcoin position and it's, and it's honestly pretty disappointing to see some of the large Bitcoin positions that exist in the space. I'm looking at some of the public companies, for example, that don't do as much necessary to support Bitcoin core development. I feel like there's a little bit of a parasitic approach that's being taken. Now that can't be said for everybody, of course, but nonetheless, like, I think that really needs to be stepped up and, you know, ideally Citadel gets to a position where it does have uh, an enormous Bitcoin position and it could have a big influence on, on development efforts and core development for, uh, for Bitcoin. 
All right. Well, that's the end of the the outline I had. Is there any other uh, anything I didn't touch on in terms of the Citadel relationship uh, with Badger or any other uh, points on Citadel that uh, we should hit before wrapping up? I don't think so, Wasabi. You know, just to iterate a couple of points that Tridium made, you know, there's been an enormous amount of development going on at Badger to make um, you know our tech more you know stronger, more permissionless, more decentralized in nature. Um, you know, naturally making it more um, efficient in in what it does and how it does it, and how and how it reduces the level of manual intervention that's necessary to accomplish um, what the contracts do and and what the tech infrastructure is aiming to do. And I just don't want that to be overlooked, you know, by some of the development that's happening on Citadel because, you know, if that wasn't happening, it would be hard to create treasure automation strategies in a way that are truly decentralized for Citadel and for other protocols. And that's been progressing um, very, very well. And there's been a variety of ongoing development and audits and things along those lines that are happening. And that's just going to continue to um, happen and, and accelerate as well as we you know look to make the protocol more decentralized, really make it more of a base layer protocol and make it permissionless to which, you know, anybody can come and spin up a yield strategy in a couple of clicks, kind of the same way that they launch a curve V2 pool. And I think, you know, when we get to that place, which is, you know, not tomorrow, but it's also not um, in the in the far future, it's something that can really help highlight um, what Badger as a protocol layer could accomplish and create quite a bit of innovation for the different protocols or DAOs or treasuries that want to leverage uh, those specific services. So just wanted to make sure that a lot, a lot of the Citadel talk doesn't overlook what's happening there because there's a lot of great development and it's a testament to, you know, the nature of our community and the nature of having, you know, a variety of core contributors that are committed to that same mission and same goal and that work tirelessly to create that type of technology and um, innovate the technology that we've already built. Yeah, I mean, just just to close out, like that's the part of Citadel that I'm most excited about, right? Like Badger is essentially creating its own, what we hope will become its biggest customer. And it's a customer that we can interact with formally through the mechanisms of governance. And, you know, Citadel can propose stuff to Badger and vice versa. And it's just a much more, I don't know, De DeFi native or crypto native way of, of interaction it's not you know putting out an article and hoping a bunch of users read it and do this or that or doing kind of like traditional business development type stuff it's a it's a kind of totally new uh new relationship and um so i'm i'm super pumped to to see how it how it plays out um gotta gotta finish with a call to action because if someone's been listening to this uh you know this far the the, the last question they have on their mind is how do i get Jonto horns on my avatar for for uh, for the Citadel launch. So Jonto, like, wh where are all these uh, night helmets coming from? If you want to jump in and uh, night yourself, how do you do it? Uh, horns are super ultra rare, so sorry, um, not available. Um, but uh, <laughs> seriously, uh, yeah, if you want to get involved, um, learn more. The best place is the Discord. Um, if you want to find the discord, I'm sure it'll be in show notes or what have you, but uh, you can also just find Citadel Dow underscore uh, the Citadel underscore Dow, I believe on Twitter. Um, and then in the, uh, in the profile, we'll have the uh, discord link hop in there. Very welcoming community. If you want to badge your head with horns and a hat or whatever else you want, um, the guy there vipes that, I'm sure once you join the Discord, you can't go more than 15 or 20 seconds without seeing him. So it'll be pretty easy to find the guy. Uh, he can help you out on that front. If you want to get involved uh, contributing to the project, there is a uh, looking to contribute uh, section, a roles channel, hop in there. Uh, emoji voting for grabbing an appropriate role. We have roles for policy, community, engineering. Um, we're doing fairly regular calls, um, hanging out in those chats, posting things. Um, if you want to start you know, putting together treasury strategies, there's a treasury strategy, strategy channel. If you're an engineer, there's an engineering channel. If 
you just want to make memes and um, or you know do marketing or make some videos we got people doing that in the uh, marketing and design channels so a lot of different ways to contribute um, you know really good community has you know been built up people coming over from the badger community people coming in from you know the the communities around the various nights has been you know really awesome bringing everyone together and it's really kind of um, you know whatever sparks your interest speak up and start contributing and um you know it's the best way to get involved um would love to have you so um keep an eye out for us we're all we're all in there too so uh look forward to seeing all of the uh new people come in after we get this out out in the world all right spada jonto tritium i'm about to wrap it up but i see tritium's typing furiously that he has some uh bonus alpha to share at the end here so tritium go for it it just a, a lot of badger holders have been asking me like how they should think about Citadel. And I think one of the best ways to think about it is like, this is this new investment that Badger's trying out. You've kind of heard about it now and you're in a great position because there'll be a pre-sale event in which like your BBE, CVX, all of your Bitcoin investments and your Badger. So your kind of entire boosted position um, is something that you can move into Citadel. So you can use this opportunity to adjust your boost a little bit, right? And, you know, think about like how much exposure you want to invest in this. But I think Badgers are probably in one of the best positions to to re-optimize their, their Badger investment, right? And think about how they want to move into Citadel. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Sure. Thanks, guys. Later. BadgerCast is a production of Badger Dow. Real quick, before you go, please, please, please leave us a like or review on your podcast app of choice so that other Badgers can find us. And if you want to learn more or contribute to BadgerDAO, the best place to get started is in our Discord server. Just go to www.badger.com and click the Discord link at the bottom. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.